you know, Rwanda, we've been talking about how they have 61%, women have 61% of the um, parliament, parliamentary seats, they have, you know, 55% of the cabinet seats, 40% of the local uh, count committee positions. But a person like Victoire can't exercise her political rights. Um, in Tunisia, the president uh, suspended the parliament and the constitution, fired the prime minister, and then appointed a woman prime minister in 2021. Um, after a very brutal election in which the opposition was severely repressed, Ugandan President Yoweri Museveni all of a sudden appoints a woman to the position of vice president, prime minister, first deputy prime minister, and so on. This is These are not accidental appointments. <laughs> these are, <clears throat> nor is the fact that they're primarily taking place in authoritarian countries, although no, not exclusively. And they're being done for lots of different reasons, not, you know, some good reasons, but, but um, I'll, partly in response to women's pressures, women's movement pressures, but also, you know, internationally, they may be seeking international favor, they may want to expand their trade, their foreign direct investment, foreign aid, perhaps. Um, domestically, they may also want to enhance women's status to increase women's labor productivity or to improve key industrial or industri agricultural sectors. Um, in the case of if you go away from Africa, go to United Arab Emirates, they're trying to diversify their e economy, move it away from oil, and so they're promoting women. Um, but politically too, um, countries may seek to soften a country's image after civil war or after military rule, or as a result of jihadist activities. I mean, this is something we saw in North Africa. Um, they also may, I, I would say in Rwanda, this may be the case that they're seeking legitimacy um, against a dismal human rights record and saying, you know, look over here at all our women, but don't look over here at our human rights abuses. 